awareness and acceptance, forgiveness for the past. You cannot change the past. Yeah. The past happened exactly the way that it did. To get you where you and are And it now. could not have happened any other way because it didn't. All yeah, right? That's and that's happened. why you're here and everything happens for a reason. So you can either learn from it or continue to beat yourself up. So why not say, oh, that's interesting. This is what I can learn from that. Yeah, you can move change. forward. You can because change. you can change the future. You can create, it. you cannot change the past at all whatsoever, no matter what. But you can 100% make your own future. By being present. So we're talking about 0% past, 100% future by being in the present. By moment. being the present. The future right. is the now, right? The future is now. That's literally it. gentlemen to the bridge podcast i'm your host sean nixon jonathan matthew my friend my friend my friend willy wonka one of the best movies of all time and the chocolate factory you don't give me this charlie shit i love johnny depp but that's right the the, the, the original book is original willy wonka and the chocolate factory give me the original charlie and chocolate give me the original i'm talking about gene wilder of course bro. the og see that song um Imagination song. In a world of pure imagination. He started on an album, record company. Why not? Yeah. So, interesting, interesting, weaving some stuff into children's, you know, novels right there. Of course. Do you relate to any particular character on there? Obviously, they're all, um... I mean... They're all, they're all aspects of the of the human experience, right? Yeah, like, of yeah. course they are. They're archetypes for sure. I, I mean, right away, I want to say... Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> I identify with Grandpa Number Two, who's in bed. <laughs> that never right. makes it past the first chapter. But it it sounds cliche <laughs> to say Charlie, but you know me, I'm just gonna fucking own it. Yeah. Uh, so, was curious, was poor, got down on himself, but then kept believing. Then went there. Then made mistakes. Then owned up to his mistakes, and then came out the winner in the end. Of uh, the other kids, is there a? Which one identifies the most negative part of you, I guess? Uh, Augustus, because he ate too much. Button, and so he was just experience. like unconsciously shoveling his face. And yeah, his mother was like, yeah, oh, yeah. my little Hercules. Look at him shoveling. <laughs> Look at him shoveling fucking turkey legs. Falls into the fucking river. Yeah, so my shadow would say Augustus Gloomp. Augustus Gloomp. And my light would say Charlie. Interesting, interesting. Mm-hmm. Poor kid that made it to the top, baby. Started from the bottom. Now we have a fucking chocolate factory and gold tickets, bro. Print gold. And fucking Oompa Loompas. Gold bars. So, the seven series continues with the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues. So, here's the thing. If you hear sins and you get triggered because you fucking, a nun hit you in the knuckles with a ruler when you're in the third grade, that's not what we're talking about. Because here's the thing. When all religion was made originally as a blueprint of human consciousness to show people the rules and guidelines of how to play this game, the happy, healthy human experience, and to eventually ascend your soul to another dimension. Then all this gets hijacked by politics and greedy motherfuckers for money and power and control, and they make rules based upon fear. Yeah, religion is man-made. Spirituality is it can be your, is your own connection to yeah. whatever that is, but religion is a man-made structure, a system, an organization... So it's fine as long as you're not hating other people with boundaries and rules and awareness, okay? So basically what we're saying is the sins are set up and they only teach people the sins mostly to have them in fear to A, make bad decisions, B, control them, but they say, you be little good boys and little good girls and follow the rules now and give us all this money and power. And if you're good, we'll let you into the if afterlife. You're on the nice list. If you're on the Santa nice list, won't put coal in your shit in your sack. You then then you get to go to the afterlife, whatever it is. And so immediately you're being pulled into future thought, and then I'm, what I'm doing now is only a means for something else in the future. So you're being immediately from ch- from childhood being pulled out of the present experience. No good. Which then, is where heaven really exists. Yeah. So that's the thing. And so heaven. you can live exactly. I've lived in hell before. Hell is not a place. 
where there's fire and a fucking red guy with a pitchfork. Hell is when you're thinking and doing negative things over and over again. Same thing with heaven. Heaven on earth is when you understand there's nothing but love and light and abundance. You're just living and being in that state. Living and being in that state in the present moment. That is the mm -hmm. game. So the rest of it is fear tactics to control people. Um, like I said, pay us now, follow our rules. We get to be rich in this lifetime. And if you're good boys and good girls, we'll let you into heaven, heaven's gates. That's all bullshit. Gatekeeping, so, literally. Literally the original, gatekeeping. original gatekeeping. Yeah. <laughs> so the point is, don't dogmatically believe every single word that's told to you by people that are trying to control you and steal your money, let alone bang everyone's wife and touch kids and whatnot. Yes. So we're not going to go down that rabbit hole because I'm fucking feeling pretty good today and I don't want to smack anybody. Um, or also, but the, the reaction to that is angry atheists that don't believe any of it, and then they miss the lessons. Yeah, if you were raised in, uh, in an environment where Christianity was that negative experience, again, like you said, rea so reactions are usually Maybe. unconscious, right? And so you just yeah. unconsciously swing to the other side as a reaction to get as far away from that as possible. That's what I did. Right? But Which is a normal reaction. Pendulum right? swing, and then you find the middle lane. You consciously realize, well, I'm not in the middle. I'm just on the extreme other end, and that's... Just not healthy either. Not healthy either, Just right? as bad, right, on the other side. It can be just as bad, yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically what we're dealing with is a relationship issue. We talked before about everything is relationship. Yeah. First relationship to self and then other. Then experience. Out. So this is just a relationship to the words. So we're here to pull the lessons out and not get you triggered by any words in a good way or bad way. In an angry yeah. atheist way or a dogmatic religious way. Yeah, like I had a... Which is like a rare, rare thing for me to hear now. Is like a, not necessarily rare, but like a lot of people talk about their negative experiences, experiences specifically with Catholicism. Yeah. I hear it mostly because it's there's different sects of Christianity. I grew up. Oh, it's a lot of terrible you know, shit. My, but it's not all. Yeah, of it. my grandfather was a pastor. You know, my whole family is very Christian, Lutheran, Christian. So like, my pastor had a wife. He wasn't like you know a pedophile, right? Hanging kids or stuff like that. Because that's like what happens that. when you tell people they can't have sex. It's like which we'll get into that. It's pretty soon. That's but. crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's too much. Right, we are going to get Yeah, the rule, and that rule is there, you know. And, and there That's is man-made rule. And there is something to abstinence. Like, we talked about, you know, um, like, the old sages had you use, like, semen retention or just, like... That's consciously for a reason, for a period of time. Yes, for that creative energy, which we talked about during the chakra episode about that sacral reason yes. being creative. So that's the origination. Not that. you're going to go to hell if you touch yourself. Again, you got warped into a control mechanism, right? You're going to grow hair in your hands if you start jacking off, right? Right, but like, that's just forcing shame, which yeah, is a lower vibration yeah, state. Change from shame rather than change from conscious awareness, right? Boom. Um, see, I had a positive relationship with Christianity. It actually helped me. It actually was a big, powerful thing to help me get to my other aspects of spirituality. And I don't know if I would have if I didn't have that base, you know, my... My family's very religious, but my mom's also very spiritual. It's awesome. Yeah, um, added on to it. And she always had a personal connection to God, and that was the one thing that she always emphasized, is like, the church and religion. She never, you know, I went to church a lot as a kid. I got confirmed and stuff like that, but she was never, like, hyper-forceful about it, the way some of yeah, other parents Yeah, God is not parents only are. in the church. Yeah, but she always emphasized, like, have a personal connection to God, because she's been through some shit in her life. So she knows that I'm not going to go and, you know, read... Just uh, being in a building for the sake of being in a building is not going to make me have a connection to guys. What my intentions are, especially when you're dragged there as a kid, you know, like exactly, that, like exactly, negative exactly, exactly, right? We don't want negative because it all comes back to whatever you want to call it, science or nature. It's a vibrational state. Yeah. Of if if you if you're taught fear God, it's already an oxymoron and you're already yeah. fucked because God is truth. God is love. So yeah. there's no fear about it because where fear and love are on a vibrational frequency state are completely opposite. And yeah. same thing. Shame and fear are at the bottom. Shame, fear, and guilt are at the bottom. Gratitude and love and then like either peace or joy or enlightenment yeah. are at the top and we'll get to that. But yeah, where I see like in terms of Christianity or religion in general, we have like dogmatic and we have hyper atheist yeah. denier. What that as it relates to relationship issues, we talk about codependent relationships. The dogmatic is a hyper attachment. That's a that's the, that's the person in the relationship who's overly attached to an idea or overly attached to the person. And that usually complements the opposite, which is someone who's really detached. Where you see very clingy people get to cling on to people who are really, are really distant. distant. And, and you're like, that relationship, how the fuck is it working? Because they both are the extremes holding each other to the middle. But the ideal is... They're not doing 50-50. Yeah, for both getting in the middle, we can both share equally, continuously. Rather than wow. having to rely on each other to be polarities, right? Blowing the mind. So, yeah, because we've all been in a 90-10... And no matter whether you're on the 10 or side, 90, right, right? It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. Bring You can only bring 100% of your 50%. So yeah. work on your shit and bring a good 50%. There's like a really good, so I love watching like 
um, like sh short animated films, like you know the ones you see before like Disney movies, like yeah. the five six minute clips. There's a really good one, and I don't know the name of it, but I know it's it's foreign. I think it's European. But you can definitely look up. It's got millions of views if you just type in short films, like awards or something like that. Um, but just the animation of this guy who's in a relationship with this girl, and they both have this little orb in the center of their chest, right? And that's like it's just the circular orb, and um, he ends up giving half of his orb to her. And so this this relationship starts out great. And after a while, she becomes like aloof and distant. He becomes like uh, clingy and resentful. She ends up leaving him, and he and takes his whole heart with, takes the whole orb with her. And so then he gets in this despair mode, right? And this chaos mode. And the animation is done beautifully to like really make you feel that with just visuals. And then another girl comes along and sees him like all fucking out of sorts. Um, and she opens up her like orb and she's getting ready to give it to him. And he's going to take the whole thing. She's like, uh, uh, uh. She breaks off half, gives him half, keeps half for herself. And then like that resolves his own issues. But it's a, Whoa. Amazing short movie. Maybe I'll get that's like, awesome. Up in there, that, that, that doesn't mean go fixing other people. That's no, no, no. That. I like that. Yeah. Because when people are like, oh, I'm going to die without you, it's like, are you really? Or do you just feel like, like giving you your, all of yourself to somebody and not saving any for yourself? Save any for yourself. Right. Which we'll and also I, get to later. Because then when people say, oh, you're my other half, it's like, mm, you're whole, yeah, complete, well, Peter sovereign you're me. my other whole, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's a other fun, whole. Fun it's like a triple entendre right there. And you have another whole. To rely on because <laughs> the, the thing is this if you're whole and they're whole then you can take your holes yeah the way i always envision it is like if you Separate. cut up uh if you have a green grain smith apple and i have a red red delicious oh, apple this is best we each have a full slice apple. it into six slices i can give you two slices and you can give me any the two slices to replace it and we'll both still have full apples right but now we get to taste each other's yeah. apple. Yeah, and if any given time I need to give and it all makes us my better. apple, you can give me all your apple, right? But I can give you half. And either way, we're still whole and, and complete. fluid, no matter what the ratio is. But if I, but if I only have an apple, and you got nothing because you know you gave it to somebody else, or you don't believe you even have yours. Oh yeah, you don't have yours. You gave yours away. Now, you gave now it all to me. Now you buy build resentment because you're taking half my apple, and I'm feeling like half a person. No, I have I'm lesser. Not, I'm not whole. And, and then you feel guilty for taking half, right? So Instead of we're both whole, now we made each other better. Yeah. Woo! You know, we went on a relationship rabbit hole, but again, going back, everything's relative. Everything relating to each other, everything's connected. I don't do ships. <laughs> oh, you've never seen that? Oh, dude, you're fucking Bat uh, Lego Batman, dude. I gotta go see. I got. Oh, I got so many movies to watch. Because what does Joker say? He goes, you complete me. Oh, that's right. Like, that's, you're my favorite. Is, He's like, yeah. I'm your favorite fucking villain. And Batman goes, I don't do relationships. <laughs> Batman doesn't do ships. That's hilarious. He's like, you think you need me? You think I need you? It's unbelievable. Uh, so, we'll learn it. let's get it popping. Yeah. Oh, great, great amazing. Voice. So, first one is lust. Lust is a sin. Chastity is the virtue. Okay, so we're going to explain a lot of these. We're looking for the middle lane. Okay, yeah. so same thing. You're doing like a Vipassana meditation in Buddhism. You're going into yourself to feel feelings. But what you're not doing is holding on to your most favoritest, cherished memory and feeling all happy all the time. Mm. But you're also not diving into your deepest, darkest thing and dwelling in depression all the time. Yeah. You're acknowledging and becoming aware of both, and then you're coming to the middle lane. Mm. Balance. Does that make sense? Balance in all things. Yep. So, lust versus chastity. Lust is too much desire. Money, power, but specifically we're talking about pleasures of the flesh. Ew. Too much sexy time. Very nice. Very, very nice, but... You'll never get this. La, 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 la. <laughs> so, too much is too much of anything, okay? Versus chastity, which is purity and abstinence. But what we want you to get to is self-control and conscious awareness of your sexual choices. So point being is, we're not saying don't fuck 10 dudes and three midgets on the weekend if yeah. they're consenting adults. We're saying don't feel bad about it and know why you're doing it consciously. Yeah, that's the big thing. You'll notice the theme with the, the sins in general is that they're all unconscious, essentially. Yeah. And lust is an unconscious relationship to your yeah. own sexual health, sexual relationship. So same thing with chastity. Don't feel you have to be abstinent. But if you're to take six months, a year, ten years to yeah. work on yourself and get better and heal yourself, yep. you know, personal development and growth, and you're just choosing not to have sex, that's fine too. But so be aware. Be aware of it. Don't beat yourself up either way. Exactly. Same thing exactly. like, oh, I slept with this guy or this girl. I feel so bad the next day. Then you shouldn't have done it and you shouldn't have felt guilty. Yeah. But... 
do whatever you want. But consciously. If, you, if you were able to have that awareness, well, now you can start to study that. Yeah, so that let's not mind. shame people that don't have sex, and let's not shame people, people that had a whole bunch much, of sex. Yeah, right, because... Much, right, right, right. Sex, There's, right. Listen, it's all relative, right? It's all relative. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. Other people have uh, hormonal needs, physical needs, mental needs, emotional needs, yeah. um, and different just sex drives and whatnot. Yeah. And if you have different options, because you have a pretty face or whatever it is... Or wherever you live or wherever you are. Yeah, wherever you are. How tall you are. Time in your life. <laughs> yeah. You are. All these yeah. things are factors, but... Capitalize on that if you want, but consciously. Be aware. Okay? Be aware. So yeah, anytime, if you're constantly, and then, you, and then it's pattern recognition, if you're constantly waking up with regret, shame, and guilt, well, let's that's take no good. a look at that. Right? Let's take a look at that. And if you're being abstaining because you were told to and you're you're afraid to feel like you're... You want to have sex, or you but feel you feel like th- you yeah. don't want to be slut-shamed, right? Which is a lot Fuck of that, that too, you know. Like there's a lot of that happening. Yeah, but that's bullshit. Which is a double standard, really, because that's like guys, are just, guys are like, spread your seed, man. Just go fuck as many chicks as you want. And girls are like, you're a slut. And I'm that pendulum is switching guy. the other way around now too, where that there's person. like too many weak, fucking, ugly dudes that aren't slinging enough, yeah. and there's hoes <laughs> hoeing all over the place. Yeah. So everything is just out of balance. We're just so, swinging back and forth. Yeah. So whatever your gender or sexual yeah. orientation is. Fuck whoever you want that's a, that is a consenting adult. Just be conscious of why you're doing it. quote the great Nicki Minaj. Fuck who you want. Fuck who you like. Dance all night. There's no end in sight. Facts. Our ships are meant to fly. Boom. So. And as that relates to like modern day, we talk about like porn, and oh. addiction, um, sex addiction sex too, addiction. right? Because like those are things that are nice that feel good, but if it's unconscious, yeah. it's just a repeating pattern. Now you're using that. Yeah. As a as a way to get you're using it as a way to get high. You're using it as a yes. high, essentially, right? And then it's the high of having a sex. Distraction because you're bored. And we've seen women taking out the jackhammer too much, yeah. and fucking nubbing themselves to nothing. Yeah. Where you don't have any physical sensation and you can't get off with a man and, and guys mental stuff. stimulated on fucking and, and then you have no porn. dopamine on ridiculous porn, you yeah. can't get your dick hard with a regular girl that you like. Yeah. Because you fucking flooded your brain with too much dopamine yeah. and you've overdone it. So that's what lust would be in a modern day situation. Yeah. Just too much. Too much. And we're not saying don't do any. We're not telling you what to do. We're telling you to find your own middle lane. Yeah, and then Alan Watts too, going back to him, just that that uh that attachment, you know, of desire, of wanting and wanting and wanting, desire that lust, you know, and then you try to stop desiring to desire, which is your chastity, right? And then it's like, well, where's the middle, right? Yes. Where's the middle? I desire too much. Well now I'm desiring not to desire, so I'm Yep. Thinking I'm not desiring, but I'm still desiring. It's either way, it eats you up. Exactly, right? So, acceptance of what you're doing, who you are, where you're at with that. That's it. Awareness and acceptance. And move from there. And, let's throw in awareness and acceptance, forgiveness for the past. You cannot change the past. Yeah. The past happened exactly the way that it did. To get you where you and are And it now. could not have happened any other way because it didn't. All yeah, right? That's and all that's right. why you're here and everything happens for a reason. So, you can either learn from it or continue to beat yourself up. So, why not say... Oh, that's interesting. This is what I can learn from that. Yeah, you can move forward. Because you can change the future. You can create... You cannot change the past at all whatsoever, no matter what. But you can 100% make your own future. By being present in the So we're talking about 0% past, 100% future by being in the present. By being in the present. The future is the now, right? The future is now. It literally is. You can play video (laughs) games with a friend in Vietnam. (laughs) Um, Cable guy. (laughs) So moving on. Number two, gluttony versus temperance. Okay, so gluttony is too much consumption. We're talking usually about food here. Consu- you can consume fucking Lots shoes, add into cart, too Soda, much media oh, consumption. Media kind of, yeah. But basically food, right? Because too much is, not, is no good. So temperance, we're talking about moderation. So really what we're talking here, uh, to bring it to present day, like fitness and healthy, happy human experience stuff, is like eating disorder stuff. Because... Yeah. I've had an eating disorder where I eat too much. Overeating, that is gluttony. But the opposite of that is not uh, weigh every grain of rice and starve Starve yourself and develop anorexia and other things. We want conscious eating habits. And that's going to be different for everybody. Because like I said, some people do like to weigh and measure. And I've done that for a period of time. We do, yeah. But you don't want to become obsessive over it. Yeah, like I I still weigh and measure a lot of my things, but it doesn't... To somebody else who doesn't do it, they're like, that's obsessive. To me, that's just like, it's actually not that difficult for me. It's not. So, but then we've also seen people 
Or like, I don't flip out if I'm off. Right? If you're or off, if, I, if I forget to weigh something, like this life goes on. Life goes on. Yeah. Right. Like this morning, I didn't measure how much tzatziki stuff I spread on my you no know, like my bread. I just I did it. Yeah. But <laughs> anybody out there ever weigh out peanut butter on a spoon? Oh, I've done it before. Yeah. You baby. will blow your mind how much people have no idea about peanut butter. You have no fucking people have no. Idea. That's one that people have no idea if about. They're like six hundred calories. Nobody knows serving the peanut butter. Yeah. They, ice cream scoop. Six hundred. Two tablespoons is not very much. It's really not as much as you think it's it is. It's not as much as you and think you it is. You break a fucking glob in the fucking taking the sword into the yeah. fucking. So jar. temperance is moderation, but you want moderation in moderation. So you stay in the middle lane as much as possible, but that doesn't mean you don't fast sometimes. Yeah. Doesn't mean you go and do a caloric deficit sometimes. Doesn't mean you go into a calorie calorie surplus sometimes. But you don't overeat for the sake of overeating, and you don't starve yourself either. Exactly. So a lot of this, is, as you can see, is not just physical, but it's mental and emotional. Yeah, and that, a lot of that has, you know, we talk about like intuitive eating and what that really means. Yeah. What listening to your body really means is, for one, getting acquainted with your body and yes. how it feels. And that's a lot of, again, just self-study. So N, equal, N equals one. Yeah. Self-experimenting. Okay, bread makes me not feel good. Or I'm I'm overeating because I'm emotional right now. Yeah. Let me observe that. Hmm, what triggered that? Which is like a bunch of my clients. They get an argument with their spouse. And all of a sudden, they're gobbling down cookies, right? And, and so many people go to step two where they're aware of it, but they don't break the pattern. Yes. Because there's yes. unawareness that you're doing crazy shit, whatever, eating too much, let's yeah. say. And then it's like pretty obvious to people on the outside. But then you become aware of it. And so many people are like, oh, this is my trigger. This is what I do when this and happens. Then, and then they like, keep doing it. Yeah. It's like, dude, you've already made the biggest step of becoming right. aware. So then it's breaking patterns and creating yeah. new habits. And that's, and that's a lot of just, you know, we'll get to later too, but it's like just self, a practice of self-discipline. Right? Discipline, uh-huh. diligence coming up. Yeah. But yeah, excessive consumption versus mo- uh, conscious consumption. That's right? it. That's what we're talking about. Conscious consumption. Temperance. All right. So moving on. Greed versus charity. All right. That's a big one. So greed is uncontrolled longing for gain. Money, money, money. So usually too much money, because once again, money is just a concept and a construct created by man. But no matter what resources it is, if we were on an island and you were hogging all the conch shells, that wouldn't be cool either. No, no. Because greed really comes from thinking that there is scarcity and that it's a zero-sum game and not understanding abundance. Yeah. Like when everybody's buying all the toilet paper and everybody thinks there's no more fried chicken and no more gasoline. Yeah, greed is the ultimate illusion of separation. Like, there's not enough for me... Um, there's everything's limited scarcity mindset scarcity mindset so now you default to survival instinct lower lower brain you know levels of just like uh, me mine mine survive 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 fuck everybody else yes but that's a game within the game because they the powers that be are doing that on purpose like you see everybody panicking that there's no gas bro they raised the price of gas then they said there was a shortage so you would go buy up all the gas when the price was high that's supply and demand but it, it, that reminds me of the fucking the diamond dealership where they have warehouses full of diamonds. They, there's abundance of diamonds, but they play the market Marky of games. scarcity during Valentine's Day. Because Christmas. money is just a concept, so they can play. They can there's play a wiggle room because there's there's so saying, infinite room to wiggle with constructs. Right? Everybody's buying all the toilet paper and all the gas and living in fear. Those fucking Charmin bears. Rich, greedy Charmin bear motherfuckers. Fucking quadruple ply destroying the planet. Are <laughs> laughing their ass off at you because they're living rich and happy and you're living scared and poor yeah like um you there's know, nothing but abundance in the universe for uh um, well you know, my friend dr lem boss mentor he brought up a good point too that the relating to fitness but this applies to all things that the cost of things um as they're sold for market price is really just kind of arbitrarily made up for a lot Completely. of things uh, just like most things are you gonna give me that much for this yep. okay okay and that's how much it'll be then. You can give me more for that? And yeah. So be mindful of that, right? Because people will, like, you know, it's one thing, you know, being in, you know, personal training or just any sales thing and personal training gets bad rap for being in sales and you do get, like, really sales many people in as personal trainers. There's plenty of those. But it's, it's a difference, right? But I've just, never sold anything a day in my life. Yeah, but understanding, like, the uh, process of how a salesman does work is really important for a consumer because... For sure. To know when you're getting a hustle, knowing when you're getting all the tricks of being upcharged or downcharged and all the so little fees and the, yeah. The yeah, I just tell people, like, if you put in the work, I guarantee we're going to get to your goals. This is what you want. It's science and this is what you want. And it's like, if you don't, my health, my fitness goals, and my money is going to be just fine. It's your loss. 
So it's more of, are you ready to commit? And then let's fucking do this. Because I don't want you to do it if you're not ready either. Hundred percent. Right? That's the point. That's the point. If it's not an energetic match, or if you are not ready, I'm not your guy. Like if I propose to you, Sean, you're not going to tell me yes if you don't think we should get married, right? Like, right. But some people do. Though, right. Right. Because right, they feel pressured. So it's, that's what we're getting to here. Also, with the charity, is charity is selfless giving, which you should be trying to do as much charity as possible. Charity as possible, but self-care first okay self-care is not selfish you got to fill up your cup first because we've all seen the overgivers where they yes, give too much yes. at the detriment of the like I know Portuguese name too, much. too much too much I know a lot of Portuguese guys guys from the Azores guys from actual Portugal and guys from Brazil yeah. but the Brazil is the best Brazil, Brazil. 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 my one client's uh, too much. from Brazil Tell me how to count to ten in Portuguese. Oh man, that's Cinque awesome. is, is five. And then the weird one? That's awesome. Cinque. And they have Oito is eight. I think the best curse word in history is carayo. It's like fuck shit, cocksucker, motherfucker, <laughs> all in one word. That's a nice little package there, right? Uca carayo. That's brilliant. Um anybody Portuguese is like I butchered the pronunciation of it, but it's fucking nice. <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah. So too much. So fill up your cup. Here's the thing. My girl Till Swan had the best analogy. It, per, like we're all cups right and we're up our cups are next to each other but i can't pour this or it's gonna fucking spill because we're so close to each other and we're all connected everything is connected right so, but what can i do fill my cup up with so much love that it spills over into everybody Ooh. else's cup so take care of your cup first self-care is not selfish Take care of yourself first, and as soon as you know that every single day you're getting better 1% each day and having fun all the time, then give as much charity as possible. Yeah, because it'll feel good, too. You get the, the cliche of you get what you give. Well, that's it. That stems from really ancient spiritual stuff about karma and just the, the law of attraction. That's it. And just, all the love. And just the energy. Just energy and energy. God is a mirror. The universe is a boomerang. Whatever you're putting out, you're getting back. So it's it's literally greed and charity is scarcity and abundance. It's all that literally is. scarcity and abundance. The the love you make is equal to the love you take. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know what I'm saying? That's Preach. Paul McCartney and shit. Um, and that's the thing. Whatever you put out there, take care of yourself, and then take care of other people in that order, and more abundance will come to you. Yeah. What well, the thing about abundance is, you're not manifesting and creating abundance. Abundance is already there. Yeah. You're getting rid of blockages and limiting belief systems Just and unworthiness and letting go and surrendering yeah. to the universe. I deserve this. I'm worthy. I'm going to put in the positive thoughts and actions. And the universe is like, let's fucking run it, baby. Yeah, and what it will do once you once you decide, once you say that and accept that and, and believe it, affirm that, you'll be presented with opportunities, opportunities to let go of the things that are blocking That's it. That's it. Which is really... Because people so will say it and they'll be like, well, I just don't feel blocked. I'm like, That's the work. That's the, you, the feeling of greed and scarcity is the work towards charity, right? You're doing it. Yeah. Doing like, it. You, like you to, you have to feel that scarcity yep. to understand abundance. So, so don't be a greedy motherfucker and don't be an overgiver. Yeah. Self-care, self-love, and then love everybody else. Maybe love way. yourself, Maybe. love your neighbor. All right? Moving on. Sloth versus diligence. Yeah, diligence. Well, sloth is laziness and apathy and being a lazy piece of garbage. Mike TV. <laughs> Willy Wonka, right there you go. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, well, they're, they're, yeah. each one of those is definitely uh, greed. Is what's her face? The I want it now. I want it now. Yeah, and gluttony is Augustus Loop. Think yeah. gluttony is Augustus. Yeah, um, we'll get to Violet in a little bit. Violet, you're turning Violet. Violet. Um, <laughs> doompa, doompa, yeah. Doompa dee, doompa, do, 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 do. So. Laziness, apathy, that's sloth. Diligence is your persistent work ethic or your discipline. Discipline. All right? So how do you get to effortless, floating on air, soul on fire, heart fucking open like a lotus flower discipline? You find your passion and your purpose and your dharma in life. What are you put here to do? And how do you find that? You be curious about so many different things and whatever resonates with you, run 100 miles an hour towards that. Yeah. What you're good at, plus what you like doing, plus what helps others and makes you some type of uh, profitable money to pay yeah. bills and whatnot, that is your path. You That is a gift from whatever. God, yeah. the universe, Mother Nature, your higher self, whatever the fuck words you're comfortable with, that is your gift to the universe, and that's what you are here to do, is play your part in the symphony. Yeah. Sing your song, and we're all going to be in the chorus verse. together. That's right? your verse. I was watching that, oh, I love that. I was watching the Dead Poets Society clip when Robin Williams give the, gives the... Carpe diem speech, 
or no, is he, what's the other? He gives two. He gives like three. Amazing, so many good ones. A bunch of good ones. But it's like, what's your what's your verse? He gives the um, the Walt Whitman, oh me, oh my, oh life. Like, what's going to be your verse? And you get a chap. You get a chance to mm -hmm. contribute in this tiny little fraction, right? That's your. That's purpose, it. But right? if we all put in our one percent, then we're winning. Yeah. What kind of song are you going to sing? Is it going to be a beautiful song? Cause just live a beautiful life. That's your verse. That's what you get to contribute. It's beautiful. And it seems so small, but when you understand how grand it is in the concept mm -hmm. and to be a part of that, that's the most beautiful thing. Yep. Right? So discipline and diligence, you want to have a plan. You want to be structured, not stiff. Flexible, not flimsy. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So have a plan, but be able to adapt. Yes. All right? And that's uh, Darwinism right there. Survival of the fittest exactly. is not the strong. Only the strong survive. That's not true. That's not what Darwinism is. The species that has fittest. the greatest ability, the fittest one to adapt. Yes. The most fit to adapt. Fit for the environment, fit for life. At exactly. In a circumstance exactly. at the exactly. present exactly. moment. Okay? And that is the beauty of it. Yeah, yeah, and we talk about, like, sloth in the modern world. It's, you know, we, people, I talk about this all the time. We both said at the same time, but bored? I'm like, how, how are you? How the fuck are you bored? bored? That doesn't make any like, sense. I got, and... For me, that's a weird one. I'm not saying that like it's a negative one. I just can't relate. You got to work twenty hours a day, like me. I'm just saying, yeah. how the hell are you bored? But like I've been negative in terms of depressed. I've been anxious. I've been angry, but I've never been bored. No, you know, like the bored one's a weird one for me. But that's the thing when you don't have structured dharma, purpose, passionate shit to do. That's when you get in trouble. Yes, because idle hands of the devil's oh, fucking yeah. playground. Devil's playground yeah. And that's the thing. That's when you get... As I remember when I was a kid, when you had nothing to do, we would yeah. drive around and drink and smoke once and do stupid shit. Yeah. Because we were, quote, unquote, bored and didn't want to be bored. So you do bad stuff because we didn't have structure or purpose or passion. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's why you got to find that a was, path yeah, that and was, walk that shit. That was flimsy right there. That's too flimsy. <laughs> but, but too stiff the other way, all work and no play, and they have no balance. Jackson, now dull-ass motherfucker. That's a that dull-ass motherfucker. <laughs> but here's the thing. Then it's, then it's all yang and no yin. Yes, and now there's no time to decompress, right? And now, Been there. now it takes the passion out of it because it becomes more mechanical and robotic, it does. right? And we've talked about this before, the doing and the working out and the accomplishing things, that's the flame, and that's great. But you also need the meditation, the sleep, the, the nature, the air as the lighter fluid. Yeah. you got to have that balance to restore yourself, right? So it's the same thing with... Um, I just don't understand people that are bored. Because, like I said, that those are the people that are getting into the other sins of gluttony, oh, well, like well, bored yeah. eating, bored porn, yeah, bored exactly. sex, bored I just need talking shit about right? people. Sometimes, and I've been sloth in the depressed sense, where but that's just been more stuck. Like emotional. You didn't want to be yeah. right, right? I'm not bored, but I'm really focused, but just on my own shit, you know, like exactly. in a negative way. Yeah, but so I've been there, laying on the bed, staring at the ceiling for a day, not eating anything before. Been you know, there like, too. Oh, that's the best. When you can't even get out of bed. <laughs> And yeah. you're just fucking. Well, what's the point? You're in between. Like, you can't even cry, but you feel like you want to cry, but it's you like want to die, but you don't even want to like physically do it's something like, about it. Yeah, it's like, ah, that's a lot of work. Not, <laughs> I would love to shoot myself right now, <laughs> but that would be just too much work. Uh, what's the. It's like uh, Eeyore. It's Eeyore. Oh, it's Eeyore. Dude, that, with the cloud following them all the that's time. That's another, yeah. Like, that, Man, I've been Eeyore, I tell you what. The depression fucking, depression head, donkey. Head, depression donkey. Head down, kicking a can down the street. Not cool, not as fun as living your purpose and your authentic self. Yeah. Because that's when life becomes the fucking, now I'm skipping down the street farting rainbows, dude. Yeah. It's the fucking yellow brick road all of a sudden. For, like, my personality just in general is very, like, I'm very right-brained to na naturally, just like I'm very creative, which is good in the sense that I can, like, see bigger pictures and I can be at multiple places in my mind at one time. I can spread myself so wide that I become too unstructured then I flop, and then yes. I, that's where the sloth comes in. So I need some structure, that discipline. So that, you plan out your day pretty exactly, well. Exactly, right? Even plan in rest time, dicking around time, downtime. Yeah, like imagine, if, time. imagine if the roads had no stop signs, no lights, or anything like that. Which there's some places in the world that are like that. Like some places in India and China, there's just a fucking free for all. Chaos. Like, you know, like a lot of the undeveloped places that have cars, there's. Need some Motorbikes and cows coming through the fucking exactly, middle. Right? It's a little too much. You know, cow the crosswalk, you know? That's All right, so moving on. Speaking of uh, personal experiences, we're doing wrath. Wrath, wrath versus patience. Rage. Okay. So yeah, wrath is anger and rage, all right? Versus patience is the ability to endure difficult circumstances. I like that. Wow. I fucking love that That's because great. life is nothing but circumstances and lessons and difficult things that show you where you're not free and where you can get better. Yeah. And everything is just and a I lesson. I think patience is the ultimate form of just... Uh, 
just like conscious mindfulness. Yes. Right? Because it's the opposite of reactive reactivity, yes. right? Because it, like we were talking about, uh, you know, Ram Dass, Rupert Spear, a lot of these great sages, they oh. they asked a question in like a in a lecture. They'll pause and they'll take thirty seconds, sometimes even a minute, sometimes even longer to formulate everything, just to soak it in, right? And they they could just speak off the bat and just let what rattles out, which is a different thing when you get yeah. a, when you get in a flow state, yeah. kind of like when we banter back and forth. Yeah. And it's funnier um, that way, but it's less conscious and reflective and formulated yeah. and calculated. We're also not being asked random questions. We also have an idea. Oh, uh, yeah, good about. point. Right, we're on topic already, so yeah. it's better to flow when you're on topic. Exactly. But, yeah, if somebody asks you a random question, you don't fucking jump you on them. pause, that sacred Think pause, that patience. Yeah. Right? And now we talk about, in terms of rap or anger, it's usually a very reactive kind of emotion, oh, right? Yeah. Because so, you get angry in reaction to what someone says, what someone does to you, Right. I know you are the wrath expert here. Oh, man. I got a black belt in wrath, which I've um, got a couple of stripes in patience, and I'm getting there as well. And like I said last time, I'm no longer going to say I'm working on my anger. I am now saying I'm working on my patience. My whole world has already changed in the fucking week Beautiful. since I've said that because everything I say comes true, and I manifest my own reality. Um, and here's the thing about... Uh, so, so when a depression dragon or a, an anger alligator pops up and stuff like that, take a deep breath. Take a pause, separate from it. I am not depressed. I am temporarily battling a depression dragon. I am not angry all the time. I am temporarily slaying an anger alligator that is separate from me and an external thing that does not define or represent me. Yeah. It's just temporary. So how can I come up, um, combat this? Patience. Deep breath. Don't emotionally react. Take time to reflect and respond the way that you want. Yeah, and and the like the what I feel like the di like anger is not a bad emotion, right? It's not. No, there's so so there's useful anger, right? And there's also productive anger. Yeah, and you can still be patient and feel angry, but the wrath I feel is the, especially the term wrath is my outward expression of my rage, mm -hmm. my anger, right? I take it in. That pause allows you to observe that anger. Like, what's behind that anger? What's in that anger, right? Is there something there that? Is is do I, am I is it justifiably angry? Yep. If it is, how do I react in a in a pot in a way that benefits me and the other person? Yeah. Right? Either way, you gotta alchemize it and use it for yeah. productive. It doesn't mean that to, to not act on it. Because rage can be like a fire. That can be a, a, a fine fire. Can be fuel, right? Well, anger is a gift. So you just have to use it. How use it accordingly? Right? Use it accordingly. So I have so many stories, man. Um, do I tell the custom model Mike Tyson story that I've told already? Or do you know the samurai story? You're not in the samurai code. You're not allowed to kill someone if you're angry. Mm. So there was an emperor that sent a samurai to kill a guy. And he gets there with a sword, and the guy spits in his face. And he gets real angry, and he sheaths the sword back. You have useful anger and toxic anger. You know what I'm saying? So my man Custom Auto, when he was training Mike Tyson, they took him up when he was 13 years old to the Catskills. And he explained to him, when you get nervous before a fight and you feel fear, that's a good thing because you can alchemize that and utilize it as productive anger, mm -hmm. right? That same fire that you feel in your belly, your opponent feels that too. Mm -hmm. But fire can go both ways. Fire can cook your food and warm your house. Or if you let it get out of control, it can burn your fucking house down, dude. And that is a big difference between both fighters, both, everybody feels fear and fire in their belly. It's how you utilize it and control it with productive anger instead yeah. of letting wrath run wild. Yeah, yeah. Because I'd burned down my own house several times. <laughs> <laughs> so and you good. rebuild that shit, but you learn a lesson. And then you rebuild it and you learn a lesson. Yeah. So patience is the virtue, but guess what? You don't want to be too patient, quote unquote, and be a doormat and let people walk all over yeah. you. You have to set your own boundaries. And first, with boundary setting, the first person you set that with is with yourself. With time, things you're going to not do, places you're not going to go in yeah. your head and with your thoughts and actions. Okay. Then when you have your own boundaries set, then you can work on boundaries for other people. This person's not going to talk to me like this. This person's not going to show up late or I'm going to have yeah. to talk to them. And boundaries are not a mean thing. Boundaries respect both people, it, both parties involved. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You have to set boundaries for yourself personally and for the people around you. Coworkers, friends, family, and significant others. There needs to be boundaries because that, then, you, like I said, you get too patient. Yeah, and then that will help set the precedent or the expectation for like 
you'll know what things make you angry and you can prepare for that, right? Yeah. If you don't have boundaries, then you won't even know what's coming and hitting you, right? And so when we talk about the word trigger, right? Or triggered, right? And that's a, the word self gets triggering to people. Yeah. Itself. But where does that even come from, right? If you think about a gun and your finger on the trigger, if anyone's ever fired a gun with a trigger, whether a real gun or BB gun, whatever, or an arrow, right? It just takes very little little pressure to Smooth. trigger somebody, right? Little trigger to trigger somebody. It's not a pull; it's a squeeze. Yeah, it's just a squeeze. And but once you do it, there's no getting that bullet back. You can't there's get no that getting back. the arrow back. So think and be patient. So if you get triggered, be careful before you pull that finger back or squeeze that finger because Don't get trigger heavy. You start be mindful of what you're aiming at. It's it's kind of like hunting, right? If yeah. You're in the woods, and you got a shot, and you're feeling that trigger coming on. Make sure it's a clean shot yes. first. Is it worth even shooting? Yes. Right? Am no, I in the why? right spot? Am I in the right why spot? Why am I doing it? Know your target and what's beyond. Are you going to use that yeah. properly and ethically? Is it going to be a clean kill? Yeah. All these things is conscious awareness. And we talk about, you know, especially in today's environment with, you know, all the shootings and stuff like that, we talk about drawing a gun and just pulling right off the bat. Yes. That's if, you, if you've ever seen the movie Crash, right, where the guy... Oh, had, wow. Great that, that crazy scene where that the new cop is in the car with the, you know, the... The black guy who's kind of sketch. Yeah. yeah but the, the guy's harmless and he goes to pull out something. Yep. I think like a little thing on his car dash and the, the new cop freaks out and kills him, right? Yep. And that's just that trigger, right? The trigger. Yeah, it we talk about rage now in the relation yep. to that. If someone says something mean to you or some, something about what you believe or who you are. Yep. It's so easy to want to pull out that and shoot yep. that. Be conscious of it. Huh. And it doesn't mean don't pull the trigger. Exactly. It don't let other people pull your fucking trigger. Oh, pull it like, consciously. Pull it. You be in control of the gun, right? That's it. Because same thing to continue the cop analogy. It's uh, defund all the police, get rid of all their weapons, and send a uh, counselor yeah. to talk to them. No, I'm not saying. You know what it's like? Oh, this More is training. Perfect, perfect time here. The movie Seven, right? Uh oh, Seven Sins. The ultimate trigger. Kevin Spacey pulled off. Spoiler alert. Oh and yeah. Movie, What's in the box? He literally kills his wife. Chops. Knowing her, that it would trigger trigger, that. trigger him. He literally was like this, taking the gun, putting his hand, shoot me. That that's literally the trigger. You wanted to complete Yeah. Wrath. So, but that was perfect what you said, like don't let other people pull your trigger because what they're saying is like, Yeah, you want to shoot me, don't you? Put that gun in my that's face. That's what they're doing. Do it, do it, do that's it. That's what it. they're doing. Don't do it unless it's the right thing to do. Because you know? a lot of times people know that they did something wrong and they feel that they need penance and punishment. Well, so they'll pull your thing. trigger. Yeah. So they'll be like, all right, I'm going to fuck with you so you fuck with me. And now we're both on a lower vibrational yeah. level instead of having compassion and patience for people. Holster the gun. Holster your shit. Take a deep breath. Take the sheath that sword. Sheath that sword. It doesn't mean don't slice motherfuckers' heads off and it doesn't mean don't shoot people. It means consciously breathe and be aware of your target and what's beyond and more importantly, why. why? Yeah. Always know your why. Patience. And, anything. and once again, that ties back to fitness. Like you're not just fucking run on a treadmill and jump up and yeah. down and yeah. slinging weights from A to B. Yeah. Know your why with everything. Yeah. Do everything with conscious intention. Everything, everything. Patience everything. allows that space for it. It's perfect. Patience allows the space for conscious intentions. Right, right. That down. So now moving on, envy versus kindness. All right. Envy is kind of like jealousy, but more importantly, more more specifically, it's pain in other people's good fortune, and that is bullshit. That's yeah. terrible. You need to be clapping for everybody, whether they're a stranger, whether they're your, they're, they're your enemy. Enemy. That's a weird word. Listen. <laughs> Jealousy is bullshit. Envy is a sin. Pain at others' good fortune is bullshit. Yeah. If they're your enemy, if they're a stranger, if they're your best friend, clap for them when they achieve something. Yeah. Because then you're putting that vibrational energy out into the universe. And God, the universe, and Mother Nature knows what you want now. And they know you're a good guy rooting for people. Because we already said there's more than enough abundance in the universe abundance, for yeah. everybody. So the universe is going to put you on that path now of what you want. Cheering for people. Because we've all seen people be haters and jealous. And then they get some success. And they get all mad when people are jealous and hating yeah, on it's, them. It's, it's that illusion that, you know, other people's success means the... Um, you know, means me not being successful, right? Dude, that's a zero sum game again, right? That's and bullshit. That, but that's that duality. It's like if he has is successful, then I must be unsuccessful. So oh. I must be successful. And you get people who are successful that push <sighs> down people who aren't successful. No good. And they're just flipping the, the duality, the dichotomy. And it's just the, the big illusion of separation, right? Oh, the grand illusion. Envying them for what they have. But they're you, man. Like they are really you. Is. We are us. When everybody does better, everybody does better. Yeah. So kindness is generosity and compassion. Once again, we've seen people that are too nice and they get walked all, all yeah. over. Because super they givers. Don't, the super givers super that don't givers. have personal boundaries and boundaries with others. 
But once again, you're always working towards more compassion and kindness. Yeah. There's balance there as well. All right. So going back to, you know, what I was thinking too, when we were talking about greed versus charity, there's mm -hmm. some people that give too much and then you get greed on the end of, um, quote unquote, worshiping false idols, the Bezos, the Gates, the Queen of England, all this shit. They're worth so many trillions and billions. They could end world hunger, clean water, all this shit. In and, our lifetime, yeah. In our lifetime and still be rich. And they don't do it. That's fucked What's up. What's up with that? What's up with that? That's what we'll just leave it at that. There's no need to dissect that. But something's wrong with that. Because you don't need to say much more than that. There's, you don't need to say much more than that. If you have billions and it takes a couple of million to fix the water in Flint, Michigan, or yeah. to give uh, wells clean water in Africa so kids are not dying from just water disease, yeah. but then, like, you're shipping in billions of experimental vaccines. Like, that's crazy yeah. to me. Cutting salaries on your employees and <sighs> loopholing to fuck over other people and other companies. When, if you did the right thing and you were living in a cycle of reciprocity, you'd still be rich. Yeah. You know? I'm not saying capitalism is the worst thing in the world. And I'm saying that I would, I'm not, I've never been a billionaire yet. Right. <laughs> that to know what that experience right. is like. So, you know, again, I'm not I'm speaking from a place of, you know, not knowing, but still... Yeah. Yeah, and I'm also not saying you can't play tax games and whatever. No, no, yeah. It's like just, if you're it's a rich, construct. you have a good. It's a construct. Play the game. Play the game within the game. The game. The game for everybody, but right? the real game, the universal laws of reciprocity and giving things back, yeah. you gotta play that game. Imagine saving the world. <sighs> Imagine it that. can be done. You can be rich and be the man. Yeah, <laughs> even if you're doing it for a selfish person, you can save the fucking world. Yeah, dude. Not a lot of people. Unbelievable. So but, finishing up. Because these people, this is a little professional segue because I'm a professional podcast. Who's these way, these yeah. people are too much pride. Okay, so the last uh, one, no. number seven. Hubris. Pride versus humility. So yes, pride is hubris. And basically, you want to be proud of yourself at all times. And proud of your accomplishments. But you don't want that to spill over into arrogance. Too much pride? Too much. Arrogance. You talk about, and pride is... I think for one, like one of the biggest ones, because it's so, it's the ultimate archetype of the ultimate villain of all time. Yeah. Lucifer, Lucifer's hubris in his famous, you know, hermetic paintings of that, the fall from heaven. Yeah, he was an angel. Yeah, he, he was, was an fallen angel. angel. Yeah, he was, you know, I think he was associated with Venus, actually, um, as like the, the, the morning star. It was like yeah, what okay. he was referred to as Lucifer. People forget they think devil with horns, but he was an angel, like at yeah. one point. But he wanted the worship and praise that God had. He wanted, he felt that he was good enough. And where do you see that? In literally every movie, right? right. I said, he chose the dark side. Every super villain, yes. Like, more power. Yeah. Star Wars, you talk about Thanos, I'm a god, right? Yep. And then you talk about Kung Fu Panda, what's his name? Yeah. The first one. Pride, I think I'm the dragon warrior. It's, this, it's everywhere. It's you know, I was just thinking about Thanos. That's the most perfect fucking Bill Gates metaphor of all time. Because it's like, <laughs> if he has all this power, why does he kill half the people when he could just clean up the pollution? Save the world. He could just save the world with a snap. No more plastic. <laughs> Seriously. Like, we'll give you Tesla coils for energy. Because no more pollution. Can't. No more borders. No more wars. Yeah. No more homelessness. Well, I guess his rationale is like, I went through the galaxy and that's the only answer. But it's the answer he wanted, really. The only thing I liked about Thanos, just on a side note, is he said it was going to be random and equal, rich and poor alike. Which was fair and sensitive. That's no flipping a coin. So now instead of 8 billion people and... Once again, that's going off the notion that there's overpopulation, which it really isn't. Which there's really no scarcity. Is. It's the fucking middle of the country. It's entirely empty. Yeah. <laughs> and there's <laughs> so many places Just because nobody wants to live there. How about stop fucking throwing plastic in the ocean and stop burning down the fucking rainforest, you stupid fucks? Well, we need more plastic and paper. <sighs> and then so what they do is they ban straws. And super lefties think that they're superheroes for banning straws. Straws make up less than 1% of the plastic in the ocean. Y'all got duped again. Dude, you thought you were doing a good thing didn't do anything it was a media and politics not that you if you have a no, it's straw, not your fault, right no that's what i mean bad thing either but right but, but don't be miss yeah the garbage patch is more than 50 percent fishing nets and shit from overfishing yeah. mostly from japan and china yeah so when you talk about countries like china and india not going along with global warming green technologies yeah. You could yell all you want about California versus Texas versus Florida. It doesn't mean shit in yeah. global scale. There's only one. And even on more climate. global scale, like our relationship to countries that are, you know, are doing that kind of stuff is also a thing because of money. Because right. of money, bro, and it goes back to greed. So all how these much of our shit's are from places that are made with slave labor, right? Just to like an iPhone just would cost fifty thousand dollars if it wasn't made by twelve year olds for a dollar a day. Yeah, it's fucked less. up. Yeah. So fucked up. People and the raw materials yeah. are from fucking slaves from Africa digging the 
exactly. Exactly. mining the slavery still exists, just can't see it. You know? Oh, you could see it depending on where and you go. And just because there's money involved, like, oh, we're paying you. Mm, all right, yeah, okay. I guess that's a formal salary, maybe. So you don't have <laughs> chains, but you have debt, and you have a mask on, I'd and you have restrictions. At what point would I rather have chains on, right? At one point, well, because then you're aware feel of the slavery, way. and you can at least free your soul that way. But yeah. when you don't know you're a slave, it's a slippery fucking slope and a weird game. And that's all the Matrix is, because then even within that slavery, you're still not, if you're aware of it. You could still yeah. be a free, sovereign being... And pay taxes and buy shit on Amazon.com. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, fuck yes, it. freedom is inherently first. You have to be aware first. of it. Freedom is inherently first in your mind and in your heart. Yeah, so they can freedom. never take off freedom. Freedom! Scotland. All right? So, humility. This is important, too, because you don't want to undervalue yourself. Being humble is a two-sided coin like anything else. Be humble. Uh, have an honest assessment of your strengths and weaknesses and own what you're good at yeah. and be proud, okay? Take a compliment. Say thank yeah. you. I know I'm good at that, but don't let it spill over into cockiness and arrogance. Yeah. Confidence is key. Confidence is the most important thing in everything. Just don't let it be cocky. Be proud of yourself. Be proud of your accomplishments. Just don't let it be arrogant. That's the balance. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And same thing with humility. Yes. Don't, you know, some people give you a compliment. You're like, no, I don't do that. You're like, clearly you're very yeah. good at that. Like, own it yeah. and work on your weaknesses. But yeah. like, and there's like, there's like self-deprecating. There's also just not believing not entirely. Not believing. Right? Oh, like, not just, and that's your balance. Yeah, and that's just, you know, that's, oh, that's, one, of my, that's one of mine. That, that you're working on? Yeah. yeah just the, so you're the working on aspect. the humility. I've never, ever had an issue with arrogance or pride. Oh, right. That's really what I mean. Not that, I, you know, that I'm hyper aware yeah. versus other people I know. And that's their say, thing. Right? I know a lot of people. Because uh, somebody that's cocky and arrogant, they're easy to dismiss and they're easy to see. Yeah. But I know a lot of people, and, you, and you're saying it's yourself, I'm going to let you um, elaborate, yeah. is having trouble accepting compliments and what you're good at. Yeah, and that just a re- and that is a reflection of my relationship on myself ah. like, for a long time. Not now, but for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, all goes back to self. I would never give myself a compliment, not because I don't believe that I can do things, just because I'm not worthy of a compliment in general, right? Or That's I'm not how the game works. Not good Once enough, you know that enough. there's abundance and that you're worthy and you're whole and complete... The universe gives you anything you want. Because... Yeah, the only thing that allowed what's his face to pull us throw the stone is believing that he was really a pull out. That's of the stone, it. Right? We're the king. The only one that made Neo the one is believing that he was because he one. believed it. The right. only reason why Thor could pick up the hammer, yeah. the Mjolnir, is because he knew he was worthy. Yeah. All right. So everything that I have, I already need, and everything that I need, I can have. Exactly. Exactly. And it's coming because I know it, because I believe it, because I'm working for it. All right. Yeah, know so your own value. know your own value. Positive thoughts, positive actions, virtues. You can't change the past, but you can manifest your own future. We'll see you next time. Peace.